Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled Science Fair Dangers, Physical and Political, Science Fair Projects That I Doubt You Could Do Today. That's me in front of the control equipment for my half MEV, 500,000 volt Van de Graaff positive ion accelerator that was kind of the culmination of the various science fair work I had done uh, during my high school days. I was a high school electronics type of geek. I wasn't into sports. Uh, and, um, I, I wasn't very good at, uh, studying my subjects and I, I, uh, spent my time, um, doing science fair projects. Now on the left is the Van de Graaff accelerator that uh, would generate close to half a million volts. I'm holding the accelerator tube there that goes in the center of it, right next to the belt there. And on the right side is a little DC 1250 volt power supply that was used for focusing. And below it is a 9,000 volt power supply that was used for uh, spraying onto the belt to generate the charge for the Van de Graaff generator, if you're familiar with any of this stuff. Anyway, um, young people in high school should not be exposed to radiation. They really shouldn't be working with high voltages. Um, and uh, how I got away with this is, is, is kind of interesting. Now, these are some of the graduate students that were more than help, happy to help me uh, with my projects. Um, I would get um, components from them, kind of surplus things. Uh, I finagled a uh, vacuum pump, all sorts of uh, devices and uh, things like that. Now, one of them, this is a Krokoff Walton high voltage generator. It uses a voltage doubling principle. These were some of the early accelerators. And the University of Iowa had a, a 4 MeV, 4 million electron volt accelerator. This isn't it. This is the picture of the one that the university had. And I had that other picture just because this picture is kind of poor. But um, <clears throat> this was in the physics building in Iowa City. And in the top of that, they had a diffusion pump. Now, diffusion pump is a method of, of reaching high vacuum. And typically, a diffusion pump uses an oil substance, and I was able to get one of these diffusion pumps uh, from the university. I, I finagled it, one they weren't uh, using. <clears throat> and from the chemistry department, I was able to get the uh, diffusion pump oil. But before that, there was a diffusion pump that used mercury. So you put mercury, and this was 50 milliliters of mercury. This was put in the... Um, diffusion pump, heated, and then you ran a water jacket to cool it. Now this is the picture of the lower part of the accelerator. And the nice thing of being in a university town was that um, you could get help uh, from uh, some of the professors. The, the main nuclear physics professor, Dr. Richard Carlson, uh, at first um, was not happy with me being around at all. Uh, he would actually yell at me and tell me to leave. He was worried about liability and he had a good point there. The university, you know, this was not back in a time when litigation was a big deal, but he was worried that I was being exposed to radiation, high voltages, all sorts of stuff. And if I got hurt, the university would be liable. But he, uh, later came around, actually, uh, became my sponsor, but there was another, um, professor in there. He was, uh, uh, Dr. Savage. He, uh, he was in the um, solid state section, and he, he was a bit of a character. And in the upper left of the picture, there is a ion pump. And Yultec Corporation, which has gone out of business, unfortunately, but they produced a lot of these ion pumps, and they actually uh, essentially gave me an ion pump. They actually gave it to the university, so they would hold uh, the possession of the ion pump, but it was given to me to use. And on the right side, uh, the pipe goes over and comes down. That is the, uh, the uh, regular diffusion pump that I had that used uh, oil, which was a much safer medium. I only used the mercury diffusion pump for a short time. And when I um, uh, emptied it, half of the mercury was gone. I had no, have no idea where that mercury went, and, and I really don't even want to think about it. Here is a fellow geek friend, Paul, of mine. He helped me uh, build some of the apparatus and helped me test it. And, and that's in uh, my basement there where I built the accelerator. 
And as time went on, I would uh, bring it out to kind of do a show and tell. The um, biology nun didn't really know what I was doing. Um, actually, my first science fair project was in seventh grade, and the nun there, uh, I went to parochial school, the nun there didn't want to have anything to do with it, but uh, Father Lindenbrink, who actually ended up marrying me and my wife years later, um, I first met him in second grade, uh, but uh, he convinced the nun that, no, go ahead and sign it. And uh, it was just a piece of paper where the sponsor, quote unquote, had to sign it. None of these people in any way offered me any assistance or anything of the sort. And here's some of the political aspects. The um, physics nun didn't like what I was doing. She didn't understand what I was doing. And this was kind of a problem. I had, I had some high school physics teachers who didn't really understand nuclear physics. And they had egos. And they, were, they weren't going to have some uh, high school student who knew more about they did. They were, they were going to set you straight. Even though I was working with the head of the nuclear physics department who had read my paper and signed off on it, um, certain high school teachers were saying, no, you really don't know what you're doing. I'm going, yeah, right. You're a high school teacher. You don't know what you're doing either. But, uh, sister Mary Glenna, this is a kind of an unusual picture cause I'm not used to seeing her smile, but, uh, she didn't like me at all. And she refused to sign, um, the sponsor form, uh, for my science fair project that I had been working years on the particle accelerator. So, okay. I'm resourceful. You know, I kept going back to the nuclear physics students when, uh, the professor told me to leave and get out and, uh, I needed a sponsor. All I needed was a signature and through, um, uh, the church, I actually knew a teacher who was a science teacher at the city school. So, uh, Art Campbell sponsored me. Well, funny thing. I won first place in the, uh, physical, uh, section and there, well, that entailed getting an all expense paid a trip out to the International Science Fair in Sandy in, in San Francisco. And so it comes in the paper that uh, Ron Rogers of Regina High School, sponsored by Art Campbell of City High, and, and they were getting to go out to uh, San Francisco. So poor Sister Mary Glenna. She didn't sign the page. She didn't get to go for a week out in San Francisco having a fun time. Well, this caused quite a stir in the background. This is the political aspects here I was getting into. And uh, Reverend Sowens there, um, he later became a bishop. And uh, interesting little history I'm going to discuss in another video. But uh, And I'm quoting from the newspaper article, uh, October 2006. Bishop Sowens uh, was the first United States Roman Catholic bishop to be named as being the object of credible sexual abuse charges. That was my uh, high school principal there. Uh, nice little future. He, he took me out in his Lincoln Continental, but uh, apparently um, he didn't, uh, he wasn't interested in me. But like I said, I'll address that in another video. Well, what happened was I had had perfect attendance all through high school. And the week that I was gone to the science fair, uh, he counted absence. But worse than that, he wasn't going to let me go. Now, I don't know how he could have really have restricted me but um, there was some commotion in the background where uh, Monsignor got involved and a few other people, and he was talked into letting me go. And I remember him coming up the hallway and saying to me very sternly that I could go to the International Science Fair. And it was kind of like, okay, I never intended not to go. But um, so it was, in the, it was in the local paper that, you know, I, uh, from Regina High School, the Catholic high school sponsored by City High, makes, makes my high school look really good, doesn't it? I hadn't thought of the political implications. But it was kind of funny. Here's the article that um, appeared in uh, the, uh, the Spectrum, which was the high school paper, and they, they put it there nice and clearly that I was sponsored by Art Campbell also. Now, this is some of the, the dangerous stuff that I don't think you could do now. This was my very first entry. It was an electron accelerator. I had a high-voltage um, neon sign transformer there, 15,000 volts, to generate the voltage to accelerate the electrons. Now, how did I get this uh, transformer? Well, uh, we had a neon sign company in the city, and when a sign got uh, blown down, uh, destroyed by a windstorm or that, it was... Uh, thrown into a pile of junk. Well, 
the transformers usually were in pretty good shape, so they could, um, uh, you know, I could salvage those. And so I went, I went to the these companies and hey, could I have your, could I have a fifteen thousand volt uh, uh, transformer? And they go, sure. So I ended up getting about six of these. I don't think they'd be handing out these transformers, uh, fifteen thousand volt transformers, to a high school kid these days. But this is a little project there. I had help from the uh, the nuclear physics uh, students there. Uh, graduate students uh, building this. One of my second projects was characteristics and principles of discharge tubes. And here again, I've got a, a 9,000 volt power supply there with these discharge tubes. I got hydrogen gas there and, um, you know, didn't electrocute myself. The next year I did a meson detector and the uh, tube on the left, you fill it with uh, a substance that um, allows you to see the Cherenkov radiation. And the little power supply down there was a 900 volt DC power supply, all kind of uh, open here. But then I started to get into the big proje project, the positive ion accelerator. And this is a picture of me at the uh, Eastern Iowa Science Fair. And this is the one that I won first place in and went to the International Science Fair. And Art Campbell was my sponsor, and kind of a funny thing, he just, he signed it, and that was the end of that. But when I won, then uh, he decided he was going to get involved. He had to kind of do something uh, to uh, impress somebody, apparently, that, that he had been my sponsor. So I won the various uh, ribbons here and there, got the newspaper articles. This is me out at the uh, International Science Fair. That was my paper on the investigation of the neutron, neutron and proton, to, proton bond energies. This was the, uh, the paper that the high school um, physics teacher had a real hard time understanding. Um, it was kind of a nice time. I, I won the Navy Science Cruiser Award. I went out to, uh, with the Navy in San Diego for a week. Uh, went out on the ship, the USS King for a day. They were trying to, uh, you know, interest us as scientists uh, to come on. And there's me with my uh, my project. Notice the uh, the very geeky individual there. Um, and you know, the interesting thing was, I came to the conclusion later on that I enjoyed making the devices more than doing the research. So I wasn't really a scientist. I was more of an engineer. And I ended up uh, starting in nuclear physics in school. I lasted about a semester, uh, about a year and a half, three semesters. And then I decided, yeah, it wasn't for me. And I transitioned over to electrical engineering. And these are just some of the other pictures. Anyway, that's the story about building a type of science fair project with high voltages, uh, dangerous chemicals such as mercury, uh, radiation, uh, having people help you, giving you pieces of equipment that were dangerous. And I doubt, I mean, the University of Iowa was a great resource, but if I was a high school kid and went there today, I doubt if they'd be willing to give me the help, uh, sometimes grudgingly, but ended up helping me in the end. I doubt if they would be willing to do that today. Anyway, that's my high school story of science fairs. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.